our first big official one, the Elizabeth Islands. Oh, oh. Cape Cod has a well-deserved reputation for offering some of the finest saltwater fishing in the Northeast. With over 550 miles of coastline that includes open beaches, salt marshes, bays, and estuaries, there are countless fishing opportunities available to anglers fishing from both shore and boat. In recent years, fishermen have been adding a third option to that list, one that allows them to access areas too shallow for boaters or too far out for fishermen and catch fish everywhere in between. Kayak fishing has gone from a novelty to mainstream, and today's fishing kayaks open up a whole new world of angling opportunities. With the spring season underway, we met up with Dave Haddon of Main Base Old Town Kayaks. Dave wanted to show off the new line of pedal-powered Predator kayaks and see how they could give us access to two fantastic Cape Cod fisheries. Kev, the old canal ran right through this way, didn't it? Right through here? Right, so the old canal channel used to run up and go right through what is now uh, the spit to Mashney Island. And they built the spit out, they rerouted the, the channel, now it goes up the other side. There's probably still that deep channel that ran all the way through. Yeah, it's about 30 feet deep through here where the channel is not very wide, so it really concentrates the fish. There's no real rocky structure, so it's nice, easy to jig, um, mostly just a sandy bottom, but it really concentrates these fish. So today we're going to be on like two, three ounce jigs, no wind, we're not going to be moving that far. And what's nice is that with the pedal drive, we can actually stay hands off the kayak paddle while we're staying in a location. And these are great for bottom fishing because you got the current coming out here. It's pretty good current because you're so close to the Cape Cod Canal, but you can just hold in the current with the pedals and jig in one spot once you get on the fish, really stay on them. There we go. That didn't take long, huh, Kev? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's a nice sea bass. There's a couple behind him, too. They get a, get a uh, drop something down right here, Chris. Guy's not quite big enough. He's probably about 14 inches. They gotta be 15. But he had bigger fish swimming right with him, following him all the way up to the surface. So, so all we're gonna do is hit the bottom and just bounce it off the bottom. Let him go. Got a little jigging stick here. Oh, yeah, jigging that's a nice roll. way to go. Got a bait pile up top. There we go. Nice. Black sea bass. Oh, oh flounder! It's got a fluke. <laughs> It's a nice little bonus. The fluke season is open right now. He's not quite big enough. You gotta but, get, uh, what, 19 inches, right? Uh, and that's in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we, 16? We're 17. 17. That is close, though. Wow, I just came across a pile of bait over here. So that's what that bird is on? Yeah. I have a pile of bait that goes from six feet. Oh, I just missed him. Kevin, there is a pile of fish below me right now. Yeah. Sometimes, oh God, that's a, that is a hog. Sometimes the sea bass gets so thick in here, it, uh, it looks like a rock pile down there or something. That is a gorgeous fish right there, big male. Boy, they are just stacked in here. Oh, there we go. That is a gorgeous fish right there, big male. These are all about 20 inch fish right here. This one might be one of my best here. Kevin, I'm gonna back out. I got one here. Oh yeah, you got a sea bass? Oh yeah, great size on it. Guys, we just picked up three wow. beautiful, very nice, very edible sea bass. Really nice white meat. Three males here, all good size. 
Haven't been out here that long fishing the uh, Predator pedal drive. We made short time getting out here. <laughs> All right, it's his first time in the sea bass, so we're not going to go ahead and judge him. We're not going to judge him. Don't judge me by my sea bass handling. <laughs> All right. There you go. That is a gorgeous fish. Dave, that's an eating right there. Those, these are eating fish. Unless you think we can go bigger than these. Oh, I say we go Definitely keep that one. Now, we're we're going to go bigger, that's, too. That is a great eating fish. The bottom, barely even. We got the crew with us today. The hummingbird helix seven has allowed me to get in on these fish. And right now I'm in 17 feet of water. We're fishing the old Cape Cod Canal, which used to come right through here before they rerouted it. So what we're doing is I'm going up. I just hit my first drop off to 24 feet. There's a big drop off. I'm gonna fish it all the way up on the 35 foot. As soon as I get up above that, I'll fish the second drop. That's where these big fish are holding. Got a one and a half ounce spro bucktail with a little piece of gulp on there. I'm gonna drop straight down. We're about 30 feet of water. And half the time it's not even making it to the bottom before they hit this. Just bounce it right on the bottom. Still on a big pile of fish, there it is. Now I'm gonna see if I can bring this up slow and see if I can't bring about three or four more fish up with it, as long as I can keep them tight. Oh, I just got the one this time. Gonna swing them right in here. Guys, a gorgeous female. And again, What's nice about this, guys, is that you can get out here and you can see over my shoulder, we're not a quarter mile from shore. Oh, well, that looks like a good one, Chris. And so another little female. This is the kind of action that you can get out here with kids, get out here in a small boat, uh, today with a kayak, so it's just working tremendous. And if you get into a big female like this, you can tell the difference, there's no knot on the topic. Go ahead and let that fish go. So today we're fishing off the Predator pedal um, for next season. And I can tell you about it now because this is coming out next year. We're introducing one that's uh, very similar to it, but it's made uh, just for recreational use. It's going to be called the Malibu Pedal, and it will be introduced under our ocean kayak name. So uh, that's something to look for next spring. Yeah, it doesn't even get to the bottom. There's a good one. That's the prettiest, that is just the prettiest fish we've got around here. Yeah, you know, when we first came out with the Predator boat, we thought it was going to be uh, really popular with the, with the uh, freshwater bass fishermen. And, and we can't believe the way that it's really blown up for saltwater guys. Uh, all the things that, you know, a freshwater guy wants, the stability, the ability to outfit it, to fit it with electronics, all of those same things are so appealing to the saltwater guys. Uh, right now, it's hard to estimate, you know, where we're selling them, but it's probably somewhere around 50-50 salt to fresh. And, and it's just perfect for the sea bass that we've been on today. This right here is just, like, right now I want to move, but there's too many fish below me, so I'm not going to. I'm fishing an ultralight rig here, made by Jigging World. Nice. 
You were on tape, huh? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's just. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. And that's how easy that is right there. <laughs> Brutal. I gotta sharpen this hook. That is a nice, that's. That is a big that fish. That is a big one. All right, buddy, let's let's hang on. Wow. We're gonna see if we can get him over here. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. take it easy, buddy. Take it easy. You're not gonna be on the dinner table. Yes, you are. That is a big male. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got it. We're doubled on two big males. Look I at this I think yours is bigger, but man, look at that head. No, you got two, we went over a school there. They're still right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Mark. Guys, this is how the gear has changed. Ultralight, jigging world rod with a uh, quantum burner. We're fishing two of the new Predator pedal drive units. I got a Hummingbird Helix 7. Dave's got a five on there. And we have just marked more spots today. That is a big slob male right there. Yeah. Look at that. We got two gorgeous males. But uh, I love this little jig and I just dressed it up with a little bit of Berkeley just to put a little stink on it. But that's a fish right there we're gonna go ahead and put on the dinner table. And, and uh, you get, you're allowed five fish, 15 inches each. And this guy's well over that. We're gonna probably keep between six or seven of us. We'll only keep 10 fish, which is gonna give us more than enough fillets for the dinner table. Let's get this guy back in. We'll do one more drift, and I think we're gonna head over and see if we can get some striped bass. After an incredible day of sea bass fishing, Dave and I headed to Barnesville Harbor on the north side of Cape Cod to target striped bass. Being one of the largest estuaries on the Cape, Barnesville Harbor is known for its strong tidal currents, which flush bait fish off shallow flats and into deeper channels, attracting big schools of hungry striped bass. Hey guys, when you're fishing Cape Cod, there's so much water to cover that sometimes a boat can't get in there and sometimes a shore angler who's surf casting can't get out there. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be fishing a kayak that's a tweeter. It can act as a boat, it can put us in water that is sometimes three and four miles off the beach, but it also can take me up into the estuaries and it can put me in shallows that sometimes boats can't get into. Dave Adams from Old Town's up ahead of us. I'm on. Well, he, I see he's on a fish up there. He's on a schoolie. We got a gorgeous day. I'm going to go ahead and get on some of these fish. But we got a lot of water to cover today. And I see a bunch of birds working up ahead. You know, the nice thing with the pedal is you just stay right on the edge of the fish. You don't have to pick up your paddle to move. You just pedal back and forth. I'm going to hit that bird in the coconut. <laughs> All right, let's go get on these fish. Yeah, so I was just chatting with that boat next to me. They were saying, you know, they feel comfortable going out today because he just put a new GPS on his boat. So Chris and I are running the new Helix. Uh, five and seven with the chirp uh, and the new G2 side imaging and down imaging from uh, Humminbird. And with that, we also have GPSs. So if we were able to get separated from the boat, I have waypoints back to the dock and we could find our way in. Something a lot of kayak guys don't think about. And uh, until it happens to you and you get stranded out in the fog and you just have to wait it out, you don't really know what it's like. Great things to get. The price has really come down and for two or three hundred dollars, it's you know something that can save your life. Oh yeah, a better fish. I'm gonna walk away from you. When you do your back cast, I'm out of your way. I'm gonna slide him underneath the boat. About the same size as the last one, a little Kubla. Actually, I was told by Kevin Blinkup that's not a word. Should be a word. I always call little fish this side a little Kubla. Beautiful fish right there, guys. Great index class. That should prove to be just a great index class of bass. 
I haven't seen this many bass up here in just years, just in pure numbers of them. Boat out in front of us, that Maritime looks like he's on too. I'm gonna zip up ahead here and make another cast. There we go. It's a little sand eel pattern. You know, we saw those sand eels right as we left the beach. And uh, so it's about a three inch sand eel. Um, it's uh, done as a clouser. So uh, it's got some heavy eyes on it. Makes it pretty, gives a nice little jigging action. I mean, you can see these fish are just a blast on the fly rod. Dave, they keep spreading out, huh? Wow, you just see sometimes when the birds go down, they just send up a spray of sand eels. Hey, let's chase these guys for a little bit, and then let's go out front. Maverick, I'm holding. I'm holding on you, Goose. About another couple hundred yards out, there's a big school of mackerel. So what we did is we took a second there to dig up some mackerel. Had the camera boat help us out a little bit with it as well because we've been marking bait all through here. Further in Barnesville Harbor, there's a ton of sand eels, but as you get out to the month of Barnesville Harbor, there's all sorts of mackerel in here. And so these fish are predominantly just feeding on these tanker to horse mackerel, anything in between. What's beautiful about these kayaks, extremely stable platform, the evolution of these kayaks have also made it so that I can fish hands-free. I can just, if I need to move forward, if I get into a situation with a fish, I can move forward. I can also back off of it. And this kayak allows me to get to areas that normally you would only be able to get to in a boat. I want to make sure he eats it. Some of... There we go. See, here's where that reverse works, right? So he was trying to wrap around my rudder. I just backed up and now I get him around the bow of the boat. I have some better fish. There's that circle hook. And again, you just pop the circle hooks right out. Each size fish. He's solid, huh? A lot of those in that size, that 26 to 28, right about a keeper, just maybe a tad short. It's always just a tad short these days. There we go. With the outgoing tide picking up, Dave and I put the Predator PDL kayaks to the test, continually running back in against three plus knot currents in order to fish the edge of the channel on the dropping tide. What do you got there, Haddon? Got a good fish. Was just bouncing it off the bottom, just switched to the larger uh, swim bait, and I just got inhaled. Switched up in size to the larger one, and, and just pounded it. I've seen it a couple of times. Oh, it just came oh. I bet it was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say about the one that gets away? Those glasses look good, buddy. As, guys, this is the beauty behind these kayaks. You can come in and counsel your buddy. It's all right. <laughs> You're a good person. You're going to be all right. Hey. I, you probably didn't see me. You got, I was waving you guys, but with the camo I was glasses. Like, where is he? Where is he? He's got yeah. camo glasses on from coast. I can't even see him. There he is. Uh, so I loosened my travel way down. 
That was my indicator that this guy was on. I didn't have to really set up on him because I got a circle hook. Beautiful fish, you can feel this guy thumping. Bunch of fish in here that are really healthy in that 28 to 34 inch class. And then if you're putting your time out here with these mackerel, these are like striper candy. Gorgeous striped bass, guys. Fish in the mouth of Barnesville Harbor, but any one of these harbors, any one of these outflowing uh, tidal flats that has bait, they're gonna hold these type of fish. This guy's a little, just about a keeper, maybe a little bit short, but he's real green. Guys, you're watching On the Water as Angling Adventures. Chris Megan, Dave Haddon's out there somewhere. We've been fishing right around that can all day. And this guy just, I just dropped it down. He came up and just whacked it. Using uh, live mackerels, I mean, it's been lights out, hasn't it, Chris? I mean, mid-20s, but, but with a circle hook, it's just hooked right in the corner of his snout. Makes the release nice and easy. Just pull it right out. It's a nice fish. Yeah. Nice All fish, Dave. Right. Yeah, we'll let him go. Try to find some bigger ones. That was fun. Woohoo! <laughs> what do you think that is, Dave? I think that's big fish, big guy. Well, that didn't take very long. There you go, guys. That right there, that mackerel came to the surface and was about to get eaten, and it just made a huge swirl. I saw the tail fin of the fish that was about to engulf him just come up on the surface. Oh, look at him on the surface. Okay, that's when you want to have a rod that's at least seven feet so I can clear the bow if he wants to go on either side, which is what he's doing now. I like throwing about at least a three, if not a four foot fluorocarbon leader. Having that extra leader allows me to grab it without breaking my tip by swinging it back just like that. Now I can wrap the leader and have confidence that I'm not gonna break the fish off. Right in the corner, that's the beauty behind these circle hooks, guys. You can pretty much ensure that you're gonna get them right in the corner. Another gorgeous fish, again, right around that keeper size. Just a beautiful striped bass. I'm gonna get him back in the water. He ate well. He got to keep the mac, and he gets to swim off. A little treat. With the tide having finally turned and the action tapered off, Dave and I began paddling back to the launch. We had covered miles of shoreline, but barely scratched the surface of fishing opportunities available on Cape Cod. Spring is a magical time on the Cape, when nature reawakens, bait fish suddenly reappear, and fish flood back into the bays and harbors. For fishermen looking to get close to the fish in action and enjoy the tranquility of Cape Cod in the spring, there may be no better platform than a fishing kayak.